scenario. So I'm looking at the animation here. The idea is really cool. I think this is just a bit too rough as an animation. It's it's not yet a blocking, a finished blocking in my opinion. So there is a lot more work to go into the actual animation before it could be considered a finished shot. So let's have a look at what can be improving here. So the story is that this guy sees these eyes in the dark and then he's scared bounces into or trips over the light switch and then suddenly he manages to pull the light switch on again and then the monster is gone and this thing repeats itself forever and ever it's a nice loop i think the problem we have is that as the guy triggers on the light again we really want the guy to look around and see where the monster where the monster is gone without that this story is a bit weak right now you do have some of the poses there but essentially you're floating left and right in there you see you just float float but really if you're looking at something you're looking for something you look stay there look stay there or look stay there and dart somewhere else and dart somewhere else and then move you're not going there 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 so it's not a ping ponging action you have in here it's more of a I reach the pose i stay there and work into the pose if anything so in my opinion i think you could finish this animation a lot earlier i think you could finish the animation somewhere over here at one two six or so and what you really want to have is the guy looking around and trying to understand where is the monster gone. And as he's looking in the direction where the monster was earlier on, the monster opens his eyes up. And I think you're you're not really using the composition very well in here because everything happens in this eye of the screen. But really, what is the rest of the frame for? I mean, at that stage, you could have put the lamp up here, if you think of it. You could just have cropped the whole frame this way if you really wanted to use the composition this way. So in my opinion here, you either reframe and crop or you put the eyes in here and this way you create a diagonal line between the eyes and the character, which would also make sense because if you look at the, the eyes in here and how low the eyes are compared to the floor, that would make it less likely for a monster to exist and being able to get that close to the floor. I mean, there's surely the monster would have a mouth somewhere, probably here. That would mean that the teeth are already into the floor there. So if you want this thing to look a lot more believable and appealing, the eyes should probably be somewhere over here. And thus you will be using your composition a lot better. If anything, I think you could even have the light up here and that would look a lot better. You could still, I think you should still be able to crop. I think you still have a lot of framing that you're not using and it's not useful to have it there. I think the eyes would work better if they were just opening and if, and then and you would have less frames to render and animate if the eyes would be just opening more or less in the same position where we find them where they open. Yeah, they can move a bit forward, of course, and a bit higher up as they open. But in practice, probably you can just afford to have them here opening up without having to translate around. I think that would look a lot nicer. So what would happen is that at the beginning of the animation, we would focus on the character looking around. And then when the eyes open, then we focus on the eyes. And then we can go back to the uh, reaction of the little guy there and it's jump. If you have the eyes traveling all the time into the frame, then half of the audience will look at the eyes here and half of the audience are the character looking there and none of them will get the story or rather they will get the story. I mean, it's fairly simple, but at the end of the day, you are diluting your message, which you don't want to. Imagine that we are in a big, on, we are watching this on a big screen and this eye can easily be two or three meters wide. So now all of a sudden the audience is tracking two, three meters wide of an eye traveling from left to right screen. They're not going to see this little guy moving a tiny bit there they are not going to notice that as much so i think you want to direct the audience and the best way to direct the audience in my opinion here is to to have maybe first the guy looking for the monster then the eyes opening here they, they don't travel as much they just open and travel a bit so that we know they are there once they open and they they are there they can maybe start traveling towards the robot and that's when the robot reacts or the robot reacts and the eyes travel towards it. I think maybe it's better if the, the eyes travel towards it and the robot reacts. I wouldn't have everything happening at the same time. I don't think that's very efficient from a storytelling point of view. Then for the reaction of the robot, I would make sure that the robot is 
definitely looking in the direction of the big eyes right now the robot is looking somewhere at somewhere which is somewhere over here i think in this area but not really at the eyes so he's not really looking at the eyes there so you really need that robot to be focused on the eyes so we probably want to have first a reaction that we see on the robot face and a bit of the body and then what we want to do is we want an anticipation in which we compress down and we squash sideways and then we have this pose that you already made that maybe for for which maybe you could have the arms take part in the action because right now this arm is straight down there probably because of the IK controller being left behind rather than a pose you wanted to have in the first place and then remember in the next pose you want the robot to still fly you still want to animate the robot flying back even if we don't see it because then we'll give you the transition right now you see that we can clearly see this foot translating to the back and it's not taking an action in anything it's just probably the master translating to the back there then you can as I said you, you can switch the light on there and then you can go straight into the routine of looking for the monster there which would give the character a lot more story if you think of it of course you need the design for the lamp you need a design for the lever because there is no uh, design in there I wonder if if it wouldn't be better to have maybe the left foot in here and the right foot already sort of rotated towards camera so that the character would be the middle line of the character will be more towards the camera and this means that you can look already in the direction of the of the monster there while you while you pull the lever and also remember it's it's a lot easier to constrain both the hands to the lever to control on the lever rather than the lever to the hands or animate the two things individually it will stay there forever if you do animate the two things individually so con constrain the two hands to the lever there rather than the other way around here this is not blocking nor animation because you just are rotating the, the master in there ostensibly one leg will move before the other and it will be a step so you need to make a step in there and as you rotate you want to look around right now you're just linearly interpolating there which you know it's a bit too simple i think you need a bit more detail there for this to work but as i said you can just finish the rotation here and then loop into the guy looking around again so you don't need to stay there for so long and look around in this area of the animation in my opinion i think you can possibly you can finish your animation at around 116 123 or so and i think it will still work and that's it so you're you're missing the key poses there and you you tend to it looks a bit like you have the poses and then you're just going linearly from one another but really you have to hold the poses so that we can read them otherwise it's a bit too fast and that's it have fun Mm-hmm.